Welcome to this workshop on basic contact. We're going to be covering several different features. We're going to try to break it up into uh, uh, simple basic components. Okay, we have two cylinders. Top cylinder is given an angular rotation that comes down and whacks against the bottom cylinder. And what you can't see at the very bottom is there's a, a geometric flat or a rigid wall. If you double click, it comes up and it's base. This is its origin, 0, 0, minus 81. And its vector is going up because this is at 0 and 0. And since this is minus and this is 0, it's going to go up. You can hit draw. And although it shows it going out on this side, it's actually infinite. And to close this out, you hit reset form and hit done. The type of contact that we're looking at is a single surface. It's not automatic, there's no special features, it's just very basic. So this is our starting point. And from here, we're going to open up LS Dyna, we're going to solve it. And it is pipe on pipe contact, start, run. It's a small model, it just takes a few seconds to run. That finishes the model, open, binary, and I'm holding the shift key down to bring it around, the left mouse button, the right is zoom, and now if we hit this button here, we'll go forward. Let's stop it right there. I'm holding the shift key down with the left mouse button, and the middle zoom is to the right. And this is what I want to show. That indicates contact is not working as one would expect. I can back it up. I can walk it through. See how we have the inner penetration going on? And this button, the next state you can walk through. That is not working correctly. So from this point, if we go ahead, let's bring up the keyword file again. Contact start. And or I just hit no, refresh it, is that we're going to change the type of contact. We're going to turn it into something a little bit more modern than single. I'll, I'll hit model all. Let's go back to contact. And I'll highlight this here. Right click. I'm just going to delete it. Now I'll go to all. Okay, let's go up to, I'm looking for automatic. It's near the front. And I want automatic single surface. New one. When these fields are blank, it's just going to, it's, it's, it's single surface. It does everything. It looks for everything. I'm going to make it soft too. Um, it slows down the contact. Use a different um, approach, segment based. It's more robust. You can find things better. That's all I'm going to do, save as, and it's going to be finish one. Down right there. Save. Let's go back to here. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. And finish one. Open, run. Now, what it did is it, it still sees the D3 plot file loaded in this. So I'm going to go ahead and so you got to close out. It's finished one. We'll speed it up a tad. We'll let all four CPUs run. Okay. Oh, while that's running, I'll load up LS3 pre-post. Pre It'll probably be finished about now. Try a little multitasking. Now, with the new file, Let's look at the, what the context is going to do. I get the direction wrong. As you can see, completely more reasonable. Much more reasonable. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to 
look at what the contact forces are between the two parts. We want to see the contact force here and also we want to see what's happening down on the rigid wall. They're two separate things. So let's go into bring up that keyword file that we know that works. Finish one. And let's just go in to here from this point. And it's a single surface. If we had, I want to turn this to all. If we had done two surfaces, more of like a automatic surface to surface, all we have to do then is tell the database to output the forces. Uh, LS Dyna knows that there's two surfaces and what to work with. Um, but a single surface, it's nice. It's general, genetic, ge generic. You can dump everything into it. Um, the way to generate forces from that is to generate a force transducer here. It's a new ID. And we want item 3. And item 3 is you just go ahead and set the part ID. And you set it to the slave. And it doesn't really matter which one you pick because we just want the force between the two. That tells LS Dyna we want to generate forces from a single surface. It's pretty simple. Now we have to tell it, I'm going to set this to model, we have to tell it we want to generate output data. And that's under the ASCII option right there. And you go down, we're already outputting data for GLSTAT, material sum. And we want this item. And it even tells you resultant interface force, 1E minus 6. And this is for the rigid wall. 1E minus 6. That's it. Those two things. We're going to give it a new name, finish 2, so we can keep things organized. We want to go back in the future. Save. Done. I'll close this. Close this. Solver. We want finish 2. Run. I'm trying to keep this moving along because you guys can pause and move forward. And let's see, is it done? Huh? Right on schedule. Open. So nothing's changed on our data set. The only thing we want to look at are the forces under the ASCII file. And it's under, you can see we have some new files here, if you look before. It's load, slave, resultant force. And there's the resultant force from the contact. Now, if we wanted to see what the rigid wall was, we could load the rigid wall. And we could hit P add. So with that option, when we hit P add, this window was still open. It just adds that curve on top. And you can see that the rigid wall force is greater because it has also, it has the tube hitting down on the other tube and carrying the full mass down. And so it's, it's logical that it's going to hit higher. And these are the two tubes coming together. So this is a very necessary thing to check and verify. So I'm going to close this out at this stage and before we continue on. From this point forward, we want to do something that's more logical on contact where things, we have interferences between the parts. And to set this up, I'm going to go into, this, into the Keyword Manager section set shell on the first one. And instead of this being 5, I'm going to make it 50. And I'll close out. To show that, it's under here, under Model and Part. And it's this item here, appearance. I mean, you may be here, but the way these work, if you select, if you hit model and part, it'll come up with this option, and it's appearance. And if you hit thickness, it'll show the thickness. Now, if you want to see the mesh again, you got to hit mesh, hit like that. So with this, you can see the graphical. You can see what's happening. Is it? It's obvious that it's that it's interpenetrating the two parts. Okay. Now, I'm not going to change anything from this option. I'm just going to run it. And from the prior one under contact, we had automatic single surface set up. 
along with soft too. I'm just going to keep it just like that. So the only change we made is to make that thicker. And I'm going to go down, finish three, and go out of the solver, run that. Finishes. Binary. And you're going to notice something strange. Nothing has moved from the first part. It does pick up the shape. It does pick up, let's go and we'll contour the stresses, post from here, it picks it up, it sees it, but it's a very, let's go ahead and blank this part out. You blank it from assembling, select part, and I'm just going to show the upper. And it sees it, but at the beginning of the simulation, it slowly forces it apart together. It doesn't abruptly change it. It's not quite, it's, it's working in a, in, a, in a logical manner, but maybe not the most as one would think. And the reason that is set up, I'm going to close this out, load this back in. And the reason is because it's a single surface contact. And in Illustina, when you have single surface contact, is it, it doesn't look for inner penetrations on the first, it doesn't look at it from the get-go because it's a single surface. It says, well, it's okay, we, we don't have to look at it all the way. So I'm going to go and set it up. I'm going to go and delete these keywords. I'm going to set it up more classical, automatic, surface-to-surface -surface contact. Right there. And we're going to use this type 3. And type 3 lets you do it just by part ID, just like the force transition. And it's just 1 and 2. We're just saying simple contact and it'll calculate the, the force. And we're not going to do anything else to it. We're just make it classic without any of the soft option. You know, this is be this would be the standard coming out of the gate contact setup. And if we set that to four and run it, okay, solver, start, browse, four. And I want to slow down and take a look. If you would have looked at the first file, where are we? There we are. You would have noticed that the rigid wall was penetrated, and that would have seen on the first file. But also, you're going to see, come down, you're going to see something else that it will tell you that the interface was penetrated. And see that initial penetration? It's still running sort of goes back in. It's oftentimes where you can see that in initial, it's trying to push the interface apart. And that's standard on contact. Is that on the classical contact, it will always push things apart. And what you will see is, I want to show the stresses, because that's always interesting. Is look at this. We'll do it on the walk through the first step. So on the first step, it's pushed things apart, and it'll push the slave down. The master will stay intact, which is the top part. You see that? It'll push the slave down. Like that. And it'll push it down regardless of how thick or how stiff it is. 
That is the normal contact behavior. So I'm going to end this here, and the next next step on finish five would be to change this contact to soft, and then do a little research and figure out why soft does that. And that's it. Thank you.